Okay, so we are now live at Assistant in German Academy and the Thinkers page. We already started our live program, but it looks like there was a, a little glitch in our Assistant Academy page. But to all our viewers, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are all over the world. Uh, I am here with uh, Miss Judilyn Aguila for our third thinking session. We call this as a thinking session because every week we posted puzzles and problems in our pages and every end of the week we are going to answer those puzzles and so we call this as our thinking session but aside from discussing the answers to our puzzles of the week we also are going to post problems for our live audience tonight and all all those who submitted correct answers you have a chance to win in our raffle draw for those who just started we are going to start this uh, question again because this was not shown live in assistant in german academy page so here is the first question if you know the answer to this can you just post that in our comment section pakibati jude yung mga nanonood sa atin hello po to jan amber sunpai batoon good morning and good evening daw po sir from assistant academy nanonood po siya sa assistant academy and si germaine garcia si sir hector good morning po sir so thank you very much for being with us so the answer to this first puzzle is letter M. If you notice, letter K is here and letter K is also here in the second cube. Since you would like to know what is the letter opposite letter U, you would like to know what is the letter in this part, which is to the right of letter K. And the clue is given by this first cube to the right of letter K is letter M. So our answer here is letter M. Here is our next puzzle okay jude pakibasa ng tanong natin so for our second question how many of the statements below are true none of these statements are true exactly one of these statements are true exactly two of these statements are true all of these statements are true okay and timer starts now parang may problema yung timer natin so i'll just show the timer here so if you know the answer, can you just write your answers in our comments? Ralph, Narv uh, Ralph Narvades, uh, his answer is one. R.L. Tibley, his answer is one. Or Ralph changed it to three. And according to J.R.C. Maglalang, they can see the answer in the next slide. And right after this, uh, we are going to have uh, another live program. This is a back-to-back -back live program. The first part is just an introduction to our main event for tonight, which is the gamification of math so we are on the thinking session of our pages and then mr herman teacher Ann, and isam one is going to take over the second period of this live program so we now have 38 seconds and we are having some uh, audio problem here with uh, judeline that's why uh, it looks like there's a delay in our audio tonight and here is now our answer to this. How many of the statements below are true? First is none of these statements are true. Second, exactly one of these statements is true. Next is exactly two of these statements are true. And last, all of these statements are true. So first, since these are all conflicting statements, then the last statement, all statements are true, must be wrong because not all of them can be true. We cannot say that none is true and exactly one is true and exactly two are true and still say that all the statements are true so we can strike out the last statement now which one can we still eliminate is it possible to say that none of the statements are true and at the same time exactly one of these statements are true that's impossible so this statement exactly two of these statements are true cannot be also correct because you cannot have two correct statements here when the statements are all conflicting so we can remove this part next it's possible that none of the statements are true and if none of the statements are true then that means there's one statement that's true that is none of the statements is true so that means if you follow the logic there is only one possible answer here because if none of the statements is correct that means that statement is correct so there is one statement that must be true in this logic puzzle Oh, we are surprised there are already 114 live viewers right now. So thank you very much for all those who are starting to watch us. So let's move now to the next puzzle. So this was one of the problems we posted in our 
puzzle of the week. Let's give ourselves three minutes to answer this next puzzle. Uh, Deke Ravales, uh, he answered one in the previous question. He got it correct. Andre Casano, it's also correct. Let's uh, check also in our thinkers page. And some also are watching in our YouTube channel. So I saw Mark Christian Villaflores uh, giving correct answer. JRC Maglalang Karyon, hello from Pampanga, Philippines. And we have one minute, 36 seconds. So in this problem, we would like to find the area of the semicircle. The green and the pink triangles are right triangles. This seven is the area of the green triangle and this 28 is the area of the pink triangle. Find the area of the semicircle. Hello, Antoinette Lascano. Um, Mom Antoinette was one of our contestants in our season one here at Assistant in German Academy. So, Jan, oh, Mommy Dalia, Jesus Yuson, good morning, good evening, po Jan, senyo. And we have 30 seconds left. Hello to Maria Bianca Belmes. Hello, Mom uh, Maria. Okay, so time is up. Okay, record ng mga tamang sagot, uh, Mom Judelin. So, what's the answer to this question? So, let's discuss the answer. So, first, let's recall that the formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Since we know that the area of the green triangle is seven, then we can substitute that in the formula. But we need to identify what is the base and what is the height. So, we let h be the common height of the pink and the green triangles. And let's call the base of the green triangle as b sub 1 and the base of the pink triangle as b sub 2. Then substituting that in the formula, area equals one half base times height. So for the green triangle, we have seven for the area, one half times b sub one times h. And substituting that for the pink triangle, we have this equation. Now, let's focus first on the area of the green triangle. Let's solve this for h. So we multiply by two to eliminate one half, and we divide by b sub one, and the right side becomes h, at the left, we have 14 over b sub 1. Next, let's focus ourselves on the area of the pink triangle. Then let's solve this also for h by multiplying by 2 to get 56 and dividing by b sub 2. Now, this h and this h are the same. So that means 14 over b sub 1 must be equal to 56 over b sub 2. Then let's get the ratio of b sub 2 over b sub 1 by multiplying both sides by b sub 2 over 14. Then the left side becomes b sub 2 over b sub 1, and the right side is 56 over 14, which is equal to 4. This means that the ratio of these two bases is 4 is to 1. b sub 2 over b sub 1 is equal to 4 over 1. Then, with this as the ratio, notice here that if we let b sub 1 be equal to x, then b sub 2 is 4x because the ratio is 4 is to 1. Then let's form the circle and let's extend this side. By symmetric property of a circle, if this is h, this extended line segment here must also be h. And using now the chords theorem, intersecting chords theorem, the product of h times h is h squared. That is equal to the product of x and 4x, which is equal to 4x squared. Then get the square root of both sides to get h is equal to 2x. So this h now is equal to 2x. We now have the base as x, the height as 2x, and the area is 7. Substituting those values in the formula, we now arrive at the expression for x. So x is equal to square root of 7. So this is square root of 7. 4x is 4 square root of 7. Next, square root of 7 plus 4 square root of 7 is 5 square root of 7. Now we would like now to find the area of the semicircle. So to find the area of the semicircle, let's recall that the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. Here, our diameter is 5 square root of 7, so the radius must be 5 square root of 7 over 2, and then square. So basically, this is pi radius squared, and simplifying, we arrive at the area of the circle equals 25 times 7 over 4, which is equal to 175 over 4 times pi for the area of the circle. And the area of the semicircle is one half of this, 
and one half of 175 over 4 is 175 over 8, then copy pi. In decimal, that is equivalent to approximately 68.72. So that's a long solution for this uh, problem. And I saw that many of our messages here, they gave us correct answers. So thank you very much for all those who answered this correctly. Now let's proceed to the next question. But before that, we are going to raffle the first winner from the puzzle of the week last week. We have 109 names in this spinner. So we are going to raffle now the first. Let's select the first. So let's randomize it. And here is the first winner. Jonathan Esperanza. So congratulations, Sir Jonathan Esperanza. You won 500 pesos.